Number three, a jet of water hits a vertical wall at right angles as shown in figure 3.1. Okay, so you have the water shooting at the vertical wall. You're given a lot of information like density, area, velocity. Familiar? Water hits the vertical wall with a velocity of 5 meters per second. Cross-sectional area and density is given. The water runs down the wall after hitting it. So it doesn't, doesn't like reflect or splash backwards. Show that over a time 1.6 second, the mass of the water hitting the wall is 1.2 kg. You look at how they draw the water. They already draw it so that it looks like a cylinder. All right. So if I want to find mass of this cylinder, I can use density, right? Density is mass over volume. Sure. So to find mass, I will take density times volume. How do we find volume of this thing again? We'll take the cross-sectional area, A, because I have value for A. A is 1.5 times 10 to the power 94. Multiply by the length L. L is from here to here. So this water travels 5 meter in 1 second. But now they have this strange timing, which is 1.6 second. Okay, no? So 5 meter in 1 second. So 1.6 second here will be 1.6 or 5 times 1.6. 5 meter per second multiplied by 1.6 second. Let's see, they cancel off, right? I believe this one will give you 8. 8 meter. So the length is 8 meter. Or you can use your good old distance is velocity times time. S is ut plus half at squared by a is 0. So the u here is uh, 5 and then the t is 1.6. Regardless, length is 8 meter. So from here, your mass is density times area times length. So mass will be density, 1.0 times 10 to the power of 3. Area, 1.5 times 10 to the power of 94. Double check to make sure it is in SI. And finally, the length, which is 8 meter. So if we multiply all of this, you will get 1.2 kg. Why they use 1.6 second? Uh? Don't know. I prefer to use one, uh, but yeah, no. This is 1.5 times 8. It's 12. Yeah, 12, 1.2 kg. Because 10 to the power of 3 and 10 to the power of 94 is 10 to the power of negative 1. Okay? So the working that we're looking for is, number one, the understanding that mass is equal to density times volume. This is C1. And then you substitute everything correctly, including the 8 here. You show us how you get the 8. So let me use a different color. Substitute density correctly, area correctly, length correctly. I understand how 8 is gotten. All of this is seen as part of your working, leading, this is your A1, leading to the final answer. You have to show how you get new numbers. For example, this 8. How do you get this 8? 5 times 1.6. Okay, so like something something like length is equal to 5 times 1.6, or you draw the diagram like what I did just now. Okay, diagram is perfectly acceptable as part of your answer. Because right now what I'm trying to see is, number one, whether candidates know that density is mass over volume. And number two, whether they can reliably find the volume of the cylinder or the shape of the water, volume of the water, and then substitute into the density equation. So at this section here, I see the substitution, but I'm a bit confused about how you got A, but if I train my eye and I look at this part here, oh, of course, it's going to be A. 5 meter in 1 second, so 8 meter in 1.6 second. Just to be careful, all right? Okay, B. Calculate the decrease in horizontal momentum of the mass of the water due to hitting the wall. So if you think of 
your wall. Let's say this is your wall. And then the water is like psh, psh, hitting, hitting the wall with this. And then after that, the water just flow down. So your initial momentum is sort of like in this direction. And your final momentum is essentially zero because there is no momentum in the horizontal direction. If the water fall down, it's all vertical momentum. And I don't care about the vertical mo momentum. The question is asking for the horizontal momentum. OK? So the initial horizontal momentum is PI. And then the final horizontal momentum, don't know. So let's say I take final minus initial. The final horizontal momentum is 0. PF is 0. Because the water has no horizontal speed. After it hits the wall, it just fell down. Rip, no rebound. Initial will be MV. Do we have the mass? Yes, what's the mass again? 1.2 kg. Do we have how fast the water is shooting at you? Got R, 5 meter per second. Okay, 5 meter per second. So, 5. So you will get negative 6 ns. Now this negative here is to show us a decrease. So you can just easily write 6. But wait a second, always write your answer in 2SF, 0. See? Because this is 5.0. Okay, we, we just have a bit of discipline. We just write all the SF correctly, 6.0. Instead of remembering to add it back. From the beginning, we write properly. All right. So the mark here would be you uh, having this 1.2 times 5.0. Whether you put the 0 minus is not that important for them, and then leading to this one. Okay. So the water has a decrease in momentum of 6 newton per sec newton second. All the water is gone away, has no momentum after it hits the wall. So now we can calculate the magnitude of the horizontal force. So think of your newton second law. Force is change in momentum over time. And your change in momentum is 6.0. It's a decrease by 6.0. How long did it take 1.2 kg to hit the wall? 1.6 second, right? So we're going to put 1.6 here. So I'm just going to try to write it vertically. 6.0 over 1.6. And this one would be... 3.75. You can leave your answer to 2 or 3 SF. I'm going to put this one as 3.8 Newton. So we're just looking for a change in momentum over time. And then the final answer, A1. Nice and easy. You got to trust yourself, man. We got this. Change in momentum, force is rate of change in momentum, so change in momentum over time taken. Also kind of popular because it's kind of important. Forces causes change in momentum. So the water that has 6 newton second momentum, once it whacked the wall, lose all the momentum already. <sighs> it's a bit like life, right? When you enter college, you have a lot of momentum, then you hit the wall, call, what's the wall? What's your wall in your study? Is your momentum now zero? It's okay, hopefully we can increase your momentum again. So stay and explain the magnitude of the horizontal force exerted on the wall by the water. Okay, wait a, wait, wait, wait a second. Let us, let us uh, look at the sentence a bit. Huh? You see this 3.8 Newton is force exerted on the water by the wall. Okay, maybe I need to draw a bit. So this is my wall. And this is my water. I'm just going to draw a layer or a cylinder looking water. Okay. So this 3.8 Newton is force exerted on the water by the wall. It is force by the wall acting on the water. And now we want the force exerted on the wall by the water. On the wall 
by the water. What law are causing to explain? Hmm. Equal magnitude, opposite direction, one acting on water, one acting on the wall, smells like Newton's third law. Okay? So, we can say the force on the wall is a action reaction pair. Of course, I have to explain now. Of the force on the water or with the force on the water. Hence, the magnitude is equal so 3.8 Newton. So the wall pushed the water by 3.8 Newton and the water pushed the wall by 3.8 Newton. You push me, I push you back. Okay, so we need an explanation. You can even say force of wall on water is equal to the force of water on the wall because it's Newton's third law. Okay, the force of the action reaction pair with the force on the water. Hence, magnitude is equal, so 3.8 Newton, and then you just name drop him. Lah according to Newton's third law. So the Newton's third law statement should always have a statement something around like um, force on the wall and force on the water. You want to make it more complete because I got no space in this line. So it's force on the wall by water and force on the water by the wall. So the magnitude is equal, so it's 3.8 Newton. So what we are looking for for this one mark is the 3.8 Newton plus a reasonably meaningful Newton's third law explanation. Okay, so most of the time, if you write something that explain that these two are action reaction pair or they are in accordance to Newton's third law, so the magnitude is equal, something like that, you either mention Newton's third law or you mention that they are action reaction pair, and you write down the answer 3.8 Newton, you will get marked here. Okay, so Newton's third law, action reaction pair. D, calculate the pressure exerted on the water by, on the wall by the water. Well, pressure, P is equal to force per unit area. We already know the force, right, is 3.8. And we also know the area. Area is here. This area that is whacking the wall is just that, that circle, right? 1.5 times 10 to the power negative 4. If I were to press my beautiful calculator. This one is 25, 2.53 times 10 to the power of 4. Pascal. You can obviously write this in 2SF. So 2.5 times 10 to the power of 4. So the calculation or the equation force is uh, pressure. Pressure is force per unit area. This is C1. And then substituting leading to the final answer is A1. Okay. So if let's say you calculate wrong number up here, you don't get 3.8, whatever you write here should be this one, should have the same number. 3.8 up here should be 3.8 down here. So if let's say you calculate wrongly, la, you write 8.3. For some reason, you write 8.3. Then here should also be 8.3. You can still get full mark. If you explain that the force exerted on the wall by the water is action reaction pair according to Newton's third law, so they have the same magnitude to the force exerted on the water by the wall. Water by the wall, wall by the water. Can sing a nursery right? Newton's third law, they are the same. Okay, that's it for this question. Question three.